In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a dark mode toggle to your website. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a project that I'm currently working on. I have a full front-end UI design tutorial video that shows you how I created this entire website. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. So jumping right into it, I want to add a dark mode toggle that will allow the user to switch the theme of the website from being a light theme into a dark theme. So I already have all the code of the website and I have some styling already applied. In the CSS, I already declared all the color variables for the light mode under root. And then for the dark mode, I added a different class. I want to add a toggle to the page so when the user taps on it, it adds this dark mode class to the body. So in order to do that, first I'm going to go into the HTML. And under this wrapper main, which is the main content of the page, I am going to add a new div. And I'm going to set the class of this div to wrapper color switch. I'm just going to add a comment here that basically states that this is the light and dark mode container. Then within that class, I'm going to put an input of type checkbox. And I'm going to set the ID of this to input color switch. So that way I know this is referencing the input. And then I'm going to add a label and the label will be for this input. So under the four, I'm going to write the same name as the ID for the input. So initially in that label, I'm just going to say click to change color. That way we see something on the page. So the cool thing about inputs and labels is that this label essentially represents that input. I can click on this checkbox to activate it but I can also click on the label to activate that checkbox. So we are going to take advantage of this in our code. I'm going to add some other styles to this later, but for right now, I wanna get the functionality down first, and then we can add some styling to it so it looks a little bit better. So right now I have an input and a label, and I have my dark mode identified in the CSS as a different class. So then I'm gonna go into my JavaScript. And in my JavaScript, I'm going to follow several steps to get this to actually change the color of the website. So in my JavaScript, I want to monitor if that checkbox is tapped. And if it is, I wanna check which state that the checkbox is in. If the checkbox is on, I want the dark mode to turn on. And if it is off, I want the light mode to be visible. So first, I'm going to create a variable that will reference this input type of checkbox. I'm writing a const and I will call it color switch. And I want this variable to look at this input color switch. So I'm going to write document dot get element by ID. And I want it to monitor the input color switch. Then I want to monitor when that checkbox is clicked. So when it is tapped on, I want to run a particular function that will check its state. So here I'm going to write color switch dot add event listener to see when it is tapped on. So I'm looking for a click and when it is tapped on, I want the switch to basically check its own status to know if it's on or off. So I'm going to write a function for that called check mode. So for this function, I wanted to do several things. I want to see which state that the checkbox is in. If it is checked, I want to enable a dark mode. And if it's not checked, I want it to remove the dark mode. So for this, I'm going to write a function of check mode. And initially, I just want to verify if this is working. So I'm going to write console log checking. So if all of this is working correctly, when I tap on this area, I should see the word checking in the console. So I open up the console and I tap, and now I see the word checking. So I know that this is working properly. Next, I wanna check the state of this input. So when it is checked, I want to turn on the dark mode. And when it's off, I want to remove the dark mode class. 
So I want to see if that color switch is checked. So if it's checked, I'm just going to write console log dark on. And if it's not checked, which will be the else state, I'm going to write console log and then dark off. So now let's see what happens. So if I tap on this, I see checking and then dark on, and this input is checked. And when I tap it again, it is not checked and it says dark off. So I know that this is working properly. So now we can actually create the functions that will add that dark class. So if it is checked, I'm going to create a function called dark mode on. And if it is not checked, I'm going to create a function called dark mode off. So beneath these, I'm going to create a function and I'll write dark mode on. So again, if that input is checked, I want to assign this dark mode class to the body, which will overrule the light color styles in the root. So for this dark mode on, I'm going to write document dot body dot class list dot add. This will basically add a class to the body that I'm putting right here. And the name of this class is dark mode. So I'm just adding that right here. For the off function, it's very similar. I'm writing function dark mode off. So for the function of dark mode off, again, I want to reference that body, but in this case, I wanted to remove the class of dark mode. So now we have all of our functions written. So let's see what happens. I tap on this and the colors of the website change. So again, just to iterate on what I did first, I created a variable that referenced this ID of input color switch. Then I added an event listener on it so it can monitor when it was tapped on. That made this function run to check the status of that input. So if that input was checked, I wanted the dark mode to be turned on. And if it was not checked, I wanted the dark mode to be turned off. And for that function of dark mode on, I added the class of dark mode to the body. And if the dark mode is off, I wanted the body to remove that dark mode class. Here are all my dark mode variables. And at the top, I had all of my root variables for the light mode. So essentially when I added that dark mode class, it would overrule the root variables. Okay, great. So now I'm just going to add some styling to this so it looks a little bit better. So first I'm going to reference that wrapper of color switch, which basically houses the entire switch. And for that, I'm going to write display flex. I'm going to justify the content by putting it in flex end. I'm going to align the items in the center and I'm going to add a little bit margin to the bottom of 1M. So this moved the switch to this area of the page. Next, I'm going to add styling for this label. I don't want this to actually say click to change color, so I'm actually going to remove that. And in this label, I want there to actually be a toggle that looks like it's moving backwards and forwards. So in here, I'm going to create a div and the class of this will be color switch toggle. So this will represent the actual toggle that will move backwards and forwards. For that label, I'm also going to add a class of color switch. So first I'm going to reference that label and I'm going to set a particular width and height. I'm going to set a border radius. I'm going to set a background color and I'm going to set it to one of the color variables. Then I'm also going to add a border. I'm going to set the position of this to absolute. And I want the cursor of this to be pointer so that way it looks interactive. Great, so now we have this label on the page and when I tap on it, it actually changes the color mode of the website. Next, I'm going to add that toggle. So I'm going to reference that color switch toggle. And again, I'm going to set a particular width and height for this. I'm going to set the background color. 
I'm also going to set the position of this to absolute. I'm going to set border radius. I'm going to set a top and left margin. I'm also going to set the cursor to pointer for this as well. And I'm going to add a transition because I'm going to add an animation in here as well. So now I'm going to add a before property that has text next to it that indicates which state that the user is actually in. So I'm going to write color switch, which is again referencing that label, and I'm going to add a before property. And for this before property, the content of it will be light mode on. Right now it doesn't look that great, so I have to fix the position of it. So I'm going to set it to absolute. I'm going to write display inline block. I'm going to set a particular width for this and fix the left positioning and the top. Right now it looks really good, but as I tap into dark mode, it still says light mode, so I'm going to want to fix that. So I want to verify when that checkbox is checked, I want to apply different styling to the toggle and to that text. So I'm going to write input color switch, and I want it to verify when that thing is checked. And when it is checked, I want it to affect a sibling element, so that's why I'm putting the tilde sign, and I'm writing label, and then referencing the color switch toggle. I want this element to transform by translating in the X direction by 2EM. So now when I tap on it, it actually animates. Now I just have to change the text. So I'm going to take this, copy it and paste it. But I'm going to instead change this to reference the label of color switch. And I'm going to change the before property. And for that before property, I'm going to change the content of this to dark mode on. The last thing I'm going to do is just hide that input of color switch. So I'm going to reference that input color switch and set that to display none. And so I can easily switch from light mode and dark mode with this toggle. It also works in the mobile view that I designed, dark mode and light mode. So there you go, that's how I created a light to dark mode toggle using only HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.